What's up everyone? Welcome back to Fish and Hex. This is Travis here. Appreciate you stopping in for another video. Today I want to talk about bio pellet reactors. I kind of want to address that. I thought I had a video out uh, in the mix of all the videos I do have that kind of broke down what a bio pellet reactor is, but I guess I don't. So uh, I've been getting a lot of questions, so I just really want to answer as many of those as I possibly can in this video, hopefully guiding you guys in the right direction. Now, uh, first one, what, what does the bio pellet reactor do? To sum it up, uh, the bio pellet reactor removes nitrates from the water column, uh, helping to prevent uh, excess algae growth and um, help uh, bring in colorations of the coral. When you have excess nutrients like phosphates and nitrates in your water column, it really dulls down the color of the coral. So if you can uh, remove as much of that as possible without stripping the tank of uh, nutrients, you can actually uh, have a very successful reef tank that way. And bio pellets have uh, aided in my success. So um, I love them and I'm gonna continue to use them. All right, so uh, that kind of sums up what the bio pellet reactor does. Now, uh, how does it work? Now, this particular uh, bio pellet reactor I have here is a uh, custom one, and the whole purpose is to pump water down the center and then having it flow upwards, fluidizing the media, allowing it to tumble at a good rate. And I like to have my bio pellets tumble at this rate. This is what I like. A lot of people um, have their own opinions on that. I've seen su successful tanks with high flow bio pellet reactors and some with barely any at all. And I guess there's just too many factors that really determine how the tank should be successful. So uh, this is personal preference. This is how I like my reactor to flow. Basically what happens is the media will tumble and the bacteria that feeds on that nitrates will get knocked off while it's tumbling and then be pumped over to the skimmer. Now I'll get into that in a later question, but that's the whole purpose is to uh, break off the media or break off the bacteria, sorry, and allowing new bacteria to grow on that media and uh, continuing the process. So that moves into the next thing here to uh, make your one, make your reactor, or to buy the reactor. Now it's totally up to you. I'm a DIY kind of guy. I like to make my own stuff, as you guys already know. So uh, this two little fishies, uh, Phosphate 150, works out great. Remember, I upgraded to the 550. Didn't like the flow that I was getting in it, so I came back to the 150. But uh, making them is very easy. It's, it's, it's crazy, stupid easy to make it. Uh, and uh, it really only costs you as much as that reactor does. And I do believe the Phosphate 150 is probably like 30 or $40, don't quote me on that, stuff like that. And then you can uh, buy a bio pellet reactor for upwards of 100, 150, depending on what you wanna spend. So making it has always been the route that I went. Now, uh, how much flow, and again, this is, goes into the other, other question there. How much flow do uh, you put through the reactor? And again, it's dependent on what you can provide. I like to have a medium flow. I find this to be medium. Um, it's not shooting all over the place, but it is tumbling at a nice consistent rate. And again, this can be determined by your system. I find that if the media in this particular tank, if the media slows down lower than this, I start to see that the glass gets uh, dirtier sooner. Again, it's gonna depend on what your system dictates, but uh, you know, you kinda gotta tweak it and see what works for you. So flow rate, I would say uh, make sure it tumbles enough uh, that the media can pretty much uh, make a complete cycle without taking forever to do so. And you'll see, uh, you know, if you if you watch the bio pellet reactor, um, if you try to watch one grain of it, you'll kind of see how it has a cycle where it'll slowly go down one side of it and then get shot up and kind of do this continuous loop. So as long as it's moving properly, you're not going to have any problems. Now, what media do I use? I personally use the bulk reef supplies bio pellet reactor media. I did use the two little fishies before, but I started getting that stuff in the, uh, you know, the excess, uh, I guess you want to call it, like, it's kind of like a plaster, it's pretty nasty, it's like gunking up everything, the skimmer, all that stuff, so I switched, slowly switched out to the uh, bulk resupply and I haven't had an issue since then. I don't remember the subscriber who mentioned that that was coming from that brand and to switch, um, if I can find it, I will uh, give you a shout out, man, but whoever that was, I appreciate that. When it comes to the return line, uh, a lot of people have different opinions on this. I personally like to have my, uh, return line going directly into my skimmer. Now this allows uh, that dead bacteria to be skimmed off and collected in the collection cup and, and not have it go back into the tank and settle inside the tank. It's been known to cause uh, cyanobacteria um, if you don't have enough flow in your main system as it is and you start throwing bio pellet uh, reactor bacteria back into the tank. I just find that uh, having it skimmed off directly works great for me and um, I haven't changed, changed that process in a very long time. Basically, I just uh, modify the input to whatever skimmer I'm using at that point so that the, all the influent goes directly into the skimmer and just gets skimmed off. So that's just a simple way to do it. Uh, you don't have to modify it if you don't want to. You can simply just have the output of the bio pellet reactor facing the input of the skimmer. You don't have to make any cuts or anything if you don't want to. 
All right, and uh, so a lot of people, and this is something that I've seen people um, regret immediately, is going too fast with a bio pellet reactor. That's something that people do and regret uh, within a couple days. If you, uh, if, for example, in this tank, with this amount of media, it's about 500 milliliters in here right now. And if I went and threw, when I started this reactor out, and I threw the 500 milliliters in there immediately, uh, I would most likely kill everything in my tank. What happens is if you put too much media in too quickly, you end up stripping the tank of the available nutrients. And if you um, if you can never have zero nitrates or zero phosphates or pure zero, at least not with this type of system, I know with zeolite you can, but with this particular system, uh, you don't want to be at zero because you'll strip the tank and you will uh, kill your coral very quickly. Uh, sometimes the tank becomes cloudy, has a bacteria bloom. The point is, is to go slow. I recommend take uh, one fourth or even one eighth of your total water volume of bio pellets you're gonna use for your system and start off with that. Go slowly, wait for the first initial batch, I wait two weeks, and then I add uh, one fourth or whatever amount you feel comfortable with every week after that on that week. So uh, every week for about two months, I was adding media to the tank, got established and, and was uh, comfortable and, and worked properly with that amount of media. But uh, never go too quickly. Uh, you will regret it if you do. Um, again, there's always uh, people who have gotten away with it. And uh, congratulations. But for the majority of us, um, dumping 500 milliliters of bio pellets into a system that doesn't have them, it's going to be bad. It's not going to work out well. All right. And then for topping off purposes, that's why I have that line there. What I'll do is every uh, three months when I do some maintenance on my skimmer, I will turn off the bio pellet reactor to kind of see where the media falls. If the media falls behind that line or below that line, I'll just top it off to that line. It's that simple. Very easy to maintain, but uh, keeping a line there always just worked out well for me. All right, guys. So I hope that answers some questions regarding the bio pellet reactor and I didn't ramble too much and that uh, you guys got a good idea of how it works. Um, I love biopellet reactors and I probably won't switch to anything else and if I ever did I'd probably just go full zeobit on the system and I uh, haven't really decided if I was going to do that yet. So either way guys, I appreciate you watching. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. If you do anything different, feel free to put it in the comment section below. I'm always interested to see how people do things differently and it kind of helps me uh, uh, try things out. All right. So anyways guys, like, comment, subscribe and I'll see you next time.